In this lesson, we will be reviewing Autodesk Inventor's Move, Copy, Rotate, and Scale command that are going to be utilized in a 2D sketch environment. So in the geometry that I have on my screen, it's the scale and stretch part that can also be found in the Chapter 2 exercise files. So first of all, with the Move tool, if in this case my geometry is constrained, with the exception that it's not locked down in an XY coordinate. So you'll notice down at the bottom of the screen here it says two dimensions are required. I could simply just click on the lower left hand point and drag it to that center point and that'll fully constrain it. So that's the easy way to do that. But sometimes you want to go back and you may want to move some extra pieces of geometry. There is a tool to do this and it's very similar to the AutoCAD tool. So click on the Move tool, or M is your shortcut key. Select on the Object, or Objects. Again, you can use the Window Crossing Selection Method, whatever you need to do. Select on the Base Point. And in this case, I'm going to get a warning telling me that there's some other pieces of uh, another constraint or dimension that's holding it down. Do I want to relax those? In this case, I'm going to select Yes. And then I can select on the second point that I wanted to get moved to and now obviously I would have some cleanup work to do so if for some reason again you're not able to go back and fully constrain that with that move option that was uh, relaxed in those dialog boxes we can come back here expand the dialog box and specifically tell what we want to happen with the dimensions or the constraints so also from this point, we can create a copy if you wanted to, or the precise input. And what the precise input is going to allow us to do is specify the XYZ coordinate system through the dialog box. So let's undo that for a second. And the next thing that I want to do here, in this lesson, we will be reviewing Autodesk Inventor's Move, Copy, rotate and scale tools that are available in the 2D sketch environment. The file that I have open is the scale-stretch part file that's also available in the chapter 2 exercise files on your CD. So what I want to first of all take a look at here is going to be moving a sketch. So the geometry that I have it's fully constrained in regards to the geometry itself but you notice it says two dimensions are required down at the bottom of the screen here. So in this case, it's telling me that the sketch itself can get moved in the X, Y, and it's not locked down. So in this case, if I want to lock that down to the projected zero, zero point, all I need to do is just click and drag on that endpoint and drag it over the projected center point, and you'll see it turns fully black in this case with my color scheme and it says fully constrained. Now that works really well and probably most of the time that will be exactly what you need to do but sometimes if you want to move a selected piece of geometry so for example let's say uh, I'm going to move a uh, create another circle here and I didn't want to use the grip editing technique we can scroll on down find the move tool, select the geometry, select the base point. Remember whenever you see an arrow that is red, that's telling you that you need to have some user input. Inventor is not exactly sure where you want to take that. So in this case I could just move that geometry wherever I need it to go. Or you'll notice I could create another copy of this. Or I can use the precise input. And with the precise input, I could tell Inventor that I wanted to go, in this case, let's say 20 millimeters down and zero in the Y. And I've now moved that. So I'll pretty much get the same point that I can pretty much with the grip editing tool. But once in a while, the grip editing will not allow you to move it. And you have to use the move tool. So let me close out of this. And let's erase our circle. And now next what I want to do is let's take a look at the copy tool. So again, I'm going to select on copy from the sketch panel. I'm going to select the objects that I want to copy. 
In this case, I'm going to just use the crossing selection method. And let's select the base point. And moving my cursor just to the right, I'm going to pick on that point. And then we'll click done. And I now have a copy in there. So in this case, probably do a little bit of cleanup. I can just trim back out that section and apply some other constraints to go back and fully constrain that. So that would be the copy command. The next tool is going to be the rotate tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll on up. And I'm going to place in a couple of dimensions. I'm just pressing D for my shortcut key. And let's make this rectangle 10 by 20. And if I show my constraints here, let's just zoom up on the rectangle here. You'll notice that I have perpendicular and parallel constraints that are holding down this rectangle, which is exactly what I want in this case. Because what I want to do is I'm going to take this rectangle and we're going to rotate it, let's say 45 degrees. So I'm going to again scroll on down, select on the rotate tool, select the objects, select the center point or the point of rotation. So what I can do now is I could just pick a point on the screen or I can go back into the dialog box and type in a new value and then press enter. If you click on done before pressing enter, you're basically going to exit out of the tool and you get to start over. So in this case, I now took that rectangle and it's now at 45 degrees. And let's show all of our constraints again. And you'll see that everything is still parallel and perpendicular. Whereas if I would have had horizontal and vertical constraints applied to that rectangle, they would have been relaxed and I would have had a little bit more cleanup to do. So let's undo that. And the last tool we want to take a look at, or the last set of tools here, is going to be the scale and the stretch tool. So let's start off with scale. So we're going to select our geometry to scale up. So the instance might be, maybe we're going to draw some geometry, maybe we think it's in millimeters or we import it and it's the wrong scale. So maybe I need to make this twice the size or 25.4 times the size. So I'll select our geometry, click on the base point, and it's again going to warn me that uh, the dimensions are holding it down. Do I want to relax those? Absolutely. So now I can again just move my cursor getting it to the size that I want, or I'm going to just put in two for the scale factor and enter. And you'll see that all of the dimensions with that rectangle were scaled evenly. So if you have a large set of geometry, instead of selecting on all the dimensions, just put them in your selection set and place in your scale factor. So the last tool that kind of goes along with scale would be the stretch tool. And what Stretch allows us to do, pretty much familiar with the AutoCAD users here, I'm going to take one portion on the right-hand side of this rectangle, and we're going to stretch that back out to so the base point. And I'll just pick a point somewhere down on the lower left-hand corner of that. Again, it's warning me that some of the dimensions will need to get changed. So now as I pick another point, off to the right. Again, I could use the precise input if I wanted to. But in this case, I'm just going to eyeball it, get it fairly close, and stretch all the geometry. So let's do that again here. I'm going to add in a couple more circles. And let's quickly dimension them. off between each other and maybe off this base point back here. So now if we go back and do our stretch, 
select the objects. Or in this case, maybe let's just take that right hand circle, select our base point, select the defaults for making that change. And you'll notice that the rectangle and the circle were stretched out, but the 14 millimeter dimension was maintained. So I can also go back at this point with any dimension, just double click on that and override that as well. Say, well, I really wanted that to be 30 and let's put that to 75.